Hey guys, Ewan here, and this video I would like to start with a Sean Ray update, let's call it that. So Sean Ray, he got into a lot of trouble after saying all those things about Sean Roden. I mean, it wasn't just Sean Roden, it was Dallas McCarver and some other bodybuilders who uh, weren't exactly great with health and some who passed away. And also he criticizes the bodybuilders on stage really heavily. He's kind of putting down the entire bodybuilding. And he's doing that as a promoter, as a commentator, as somebody who should be lifting it up. So because of that reason, he received a lot of hate, a lot of negativity. A lot of people wanted to see him removed from his position. For example, probably the most successful bodybuilding podcast host, Fuad Abiyad, really, really doesn't like Sean Ray. Fuad talks about that openly and very often, similar things to what I said just now. And now he's going to be actually doing something, he's going to be replacing him as a commentator at the Arnold Classic. So finally he did something about it. But that's Arnold Classic, that's different. Sean Ray is employed by Mr. Olympia people. So he's going to be still commentating Mr. Olympia it seems. For now, for now. But here we got something interesting to hear from Dan Solomon, who went to Jay Cutler's podcast. Yeah, Jay Cutler has a podcast. He doesn't really have a lot of videos. What he has, I try to watch. To be honest, I didn't really like it. I didn't really enjoy it. I don't know, maybe it's too serious for me. I like something more like uh, Fuad Abia than the other podcasts that are a little bit more fun. Like Dennis James podcast. And also Think Big Media or It's Just Bodybuilding with Dusty Hanshaw and Ron Partlow. So, for example, those are great bodybuilding podcasts. As far as Jay Cutler, go ahead and give it a try. It's not really that good, to be honest, but... Surely it will get better with time, but as for now, I, I don't really dig it. But if you guys enjoy it, go ahead and watch it. Anyways, this latest podcast with Dan Solomon was informative, not so much fun, but the one part from it that I found fun was when he talked about Sean Ray, which is a very hot topic right now. He talked about potentially firing or canceling him. So if you guys don't want to watch the whole podcast for two hours... I have a short version, short clip, one minute long clip about this. So let me show you what let me show you what Dan Solomon had to say about firing or canceling Sean Ray. And uh, there's been a lot of in the news lately about our, our good friend Sean Ray. Yeah, you know it's uh, it's funny you mentioned the Sean Ray thing because um, it's amazing how my phone blew up on that one. And we and we take it all pretty seriously. We do. I don't agree with most of the things that Sean said. I want to be crystal clear about that. Sean says things all the time that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. When Sean's comments went out there and then people were reaching out to Jake Wood, who of course owns the Olympia and muscle and fitness. And they were reaching out to all sorts of people talking about the idea of firing Sean and canceling Sean. That was a big conversation and it still is. Mm -hmm. Do you remember years ago when every time any of us did interviews, we were always accused of, being puppets, remember? They would always say that our words were being controlled, that on some level, the leaders or the leadership was telling us what to say. Sponsors sometimes. Right. We've worked really hard to shift that vibe. We've worked really hard to give people who have opinions the freedom to express them. Let's think about the other opinion givers out there, the, the Palumbos and the Romanos and all these guys that have opinions. They say things all the time that I don't agree with. While I didn't agree with what he said, while I didn't appreciate what he said, I didn't call up anybody and ask anybody to fire him. And I reached out to Sean and had a very strong conversation with him about the things that were said. Yeah. But that conversation did not include termination, firing, or canceling. Yeah, so Sean Ray is not getting canceled, not getting fired. Uh, Dan Solomon talks about uh, the freedom of speech and stuff like that. He talks about what some other people who have platforms talked about uh, certain things that he didn't agree with and he didn't want them to get fired. But it's not about what Dan Solomon wants, it's about what fans want. And most fans, I feel like most bodybuilding fans don't want Sean Ray to commentate on shows. So I wanted to ask you guys, how do you feel about Sean Ray? Should he get fired? Apparently he's not gonna, but what do you think? Do you wanna see him keep commenting on bodybuilding shows on Mr. Olympia or you want him removed? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. Alright, next story is a very interesting one. Uh, it's uh, Max Charles being coached by Dennis Wolf. 
Yeah, you heard that right. Dennis Wolf is a coach of Max Charles. Since when is Dennis uh, Wolf uh, a coach? I don't know, but you know he succeeded himself, so he probably knows a thing or two. Uh, it's interesting that Max Charles was, until recently, coached by Milo Sharchev. And you guys know that Milos was very passionate about his athletes, he still is, and whenever Charles competed and he didn't really place as well as he wanted to, Milos was uh, the one who was saying that he deserved to place higher. For example, when he said that he was better than Ian, and Ian cried because of it. So that's just one example. Milos always said that, that Max should place higher because he has uh, very aesthetic-looking uh, abs and overall a great wheat taper. That's the things that Milos likes to see on athletes. So Milos was, uh, you know, yeah, he was biased because it was his client, but still he likes those kind of physiques. The reason why Max stopped working with Milos is because Milos gave an advice to Akim Williams when he was uh, battling against Max. So Max felt like he was helping his competition to beat him. I know, nonsense. Anyways, they stopped working, and now Max works with uh, Dennis Wolf. But here is the interesting stuff. So Dennis Wolf was also coached by Milos Archer back in the day. Uh, and uh, Dennis looked the best. His best version ever is 2007 Mr. Olympia and New York Pro. It is the only time basically when Dennis had crazy fullness with good conditioning. He was sharper, but a little bit flatter later. This is not the, his best placement, but this is the first time he went to the Mr. Olympia. And he was fifth, guys. Fifth at his first Mr. Olympia. He was beaten by Ronnie Coleman, who lost the year before. And they all say that they gave it to Ronnie. They all say it, but it's pretty obvious based on photos, too. I mean, this is uh, the second year after he lost to Mr. Olympia. They didn't want to give Ronnie less than fourth, which is also pretty bad. So they gave him fourth and Dennis ended up in fifth and this was his best look ever. If all went so well, why did they stop working? Well, I have an answer to that as well. It's because Milos was uh, banned by IBB because he said some things about uh, corruption in judging. He noticed something, he saw something, he reported it and uh, they didn't want that out. So they said that he was lying, that Milos was lying and he was banned. Not only... Uh, from being a professional bodybuilder to compete in IBB, but also to coach guys who are in IBB, who are sponsored by certain companies and so on, and Dennis Wolf had to stop working with Milos. But hey, they, they, they worked together for a while, and things clicked, it was great, so I'm sure he learned a lot from Milos. Dennis Wolf was also coached by Patrick Tour, and he didn't like the way Patrick was working, and when he talked about the reasons why it didn't go so well, you can kind of grasp that Dennis Wolf knows a few things about, uh, you know, prepping and bodybuilding. He's not just a bodybuilder, he understands the matter quite well. In any case, this is an odd, a, a, a weird and, and interesting choice by Max Charles to pick Dennis Wolf, who probably doesn't have a lot of experience in prepping pros, but uh, <laughs> maybe it's a publicity stunt. I don't think it is, but if it was, it would be a good move, because it will definitely draw a lot of attention. It's definitely an interesting collab, and uh, I'm really curious to see how this will play out in the end. Unfortunately for Dennis Wolf, he didn't get a genetic freak like this to work with. Because I'm guessing when somebody is at this point, you can't really go that much uh, off with, with you. I'm, I'm guessing, I could be wrong. But I think it would be pretty, it would be much simpler to work with Nick than with Max, who needs a lot of improvement. And Nick, I don't know, he just, I guess he just needs some fine polishment and maybe some upper chest. And that's about it. He's pretty much done, right? I mean, look at this side chest. Look at how massive this guy is. It's, it's ridiculous. So this is after an arm workout, which he never does because he has incredibly big arms. But he did it, he got a pump, and this is how sick it looks. I mean, even the chest, he kind of is known for having a weaker chest, he talks about that very often, but it's, it's just the upper chest shelf. As far as the lower chest, it's really freaking big and massive. And as far as delts, arms, back, legs, everything, this guy just keeps getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> he might win the Mr. Olympia next year. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the way he's growing... Look at this. This is this is absolutely sick. This is insane. 
Uh, he's he's like on the verge of being the biggest bodybuilder of all time. Like he's getting into Ronnie Coleman territory. When you look at Ronnie Coleman in the off season, you were just you would be just like, what the what the hell is that? And here it's pretty much the same effect. When you're watching this, you're like, what the hell? I mean, look at how massive those arms are. He literally ran out of room between the bicep and the forearm. He cannot flex the biceps anymore because he's hitting them with his forearms. I mean, how crazy that is. Isn't that ridiculous? Anyways, this guy is super, super massive right now. He keeps on growing. And no, he's not even going to be competing in the Arnold. Maybe he should. I mean, that's a big price, but he already won it. And he wants to win the Mr. Olympia. So I get that, but like the the rate that he's growing that he's growing at by the time mr olympia comes how big he will be will he be like 280 on stage or something like that this is the first time in a long time that he has an, a proper off season and you can see the results from it he is growing like wheat it's insane it's ridiculous so just really impressive physique when you take a look at this you're just admiring it you just can't believe you're seeing this this guy is really freaking massive and if he actually keeps improving at this rate, I don't think it's too crazy to say that he can win the Mr. Olympia and beat Big Ramy next year. Yeah, I think it's I think it's pretty it's pretty rational. Don't you guys think so? If you guys agree or disagree, tell me in the comment section down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys for watching. All the best and bye bye.